Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Miller, and the SCP we're going to be looking at today is SCP-2408. Object Class, Keter. Special Containment Procedures. The Foundation is to infiltrate and control law enforcement agencies in areas where DOI-0432 activity is suspected. Information regarding the anomalous activities of GOI-0432 is to be suppressed. Mobile Task Force Psi-13, Witch Hunters, has been tasked with the search for and elimination of GOI-0432 members. SCP-2408-1 In the event that a member is captured alive, they are to be thoroughly interrogated, using any means deemed necessary, prior to termination. The bodies autopsied and disposed of per hazardous waste protocols. Mobile Task Force Psi-9, Abyss Gazers, is to provide security to researchers at SCP-2408-3. Individuals attempting to gain access to SCP-2408-3 are to be terminated on site. Patrols are to search for potential access points which must be securely sealed when discovered. Armed Reliquary and Biological Containment Area 06 has been constructed beneath Moscow in order to contain and study SCP-2408-3. Description. Okay, SCP-2408 designates several anomalies associated with GOI-0432, the Hunter's Black Lodge, what? an anomalous criminal organization and sarkic cult primarily active in the post-Soviet states. SCP-2408-1 are genetically normal humans capable of undergoing gross physical transfiguration. Ooh. Known changes include mass increase by multiples of two and sometimes three primarily muscle, increased bone density, and increase of testosterone production with levels approximately six times as great as in baseline adult males, an increase of adrenaline production with levels approximately four times as great as in baseline adult males, enlargement of organs in proportion to increased mass with the exception of the testes and adrenal glands, which increase in size well beyond what would be proportional and the brain which does not appear to change in size. The manifestation of non-human physicalities, for example, lupine, hercine, porcine, ursine, servine, and octopine features have all been recorded. Oh. An ability to shift between bipedal and quadrupedal movement. Amplified senses, seeing, hearing, tasting, and smelling things outside of human sensory limitations. Dude, this is pretty cool. Amplified strength, speed, and regenerative ability. Unlike Proteus Cronenberg syndrome, SCP-2408-1 instances are able to reverse these changes while maintaining cellular stability. It remains unknown whether or not these transformations can be maintained indefinitely. Complete transmogrification can be achieved within 10 to 30 seconds. Oh! Dude, that is dope! That is so cool. Dude, they're like sleeping agents from like the Soviet times. You know, if you've ever seen like, like spy movies and stuff, there's usually like a Soviet agent that is like sleeper mode and then he hears a phrase and it's like ding, 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 Soviet, uh, a Soviet uh, spy activated. It, it nearly seems like the same thing. Like they can suddenly activate uh, or they can suddenly manipulate their own bodies and do quite extraordinary things. I mean, grow their size by four times, increase their testosterone. I will say though, it would. <laughs> it is funny that he mentioned that they couldn't grow the penis or the 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 testes. That is hilarious. <laughs> okay, just to make it hundred percent clear, it's humanoids that can manipulate their own bodies uh, physically. Now we don't know an extent of this. Maybe they can like enlarge their own brains to make them smarter. Maybe they can uh, do it the opposite. They can enlarge a lot of things. Maybe they can also shrink. I mean, they haven't mentioned it, but like, it might be a possibility. But they're essentially, they're like superhumans. For all intents and purposes, they're superhumans. SCP-2408 was discovered during Operation Falconrath. Operation Falconrath involved the infiltration of GOI-0432, known as the Black Hunter's Lodge, or simply, the Black Lodge. GOI-0432 has been linked to extortion, murder, robbery, gambling, prostitution, human trafficking, Jesus drug trafficking, Christ. weapons trafficking, 
and underground fighting rings. Making While these activities are not inherently stone. anomalous, the anomalous capabilities of GOI-0432 has had an aberrant effect on their practice. These anomalies include the trafficking and distribution of anomalous pharmaceutical agents, primarily in the form of the anabolic androgenic steroid, Gnev. the intravenous injection of Gnev. triggers anomalous Gnev. levels of muscle and bone growth, continue and or excessive use will result in Proteus Cronenberg syndrome and or death. Analysis suggests that this substance is harvested from the adrenal gland of an unidentified species of animal and has thus been classified as SCP-2408-2A. The trafficking and distribution of a potent narcotic and increasingly prevalent club drug. Normally sold in small glass vials, it is administered to the body through insufflation into the sinus cavities. Injection has been found to be universally fatal. The substance triggers various sensory hallucinations, increased heart palpitations, increased sexual arousal, and feelings of euphoria. Studies have shown the substance to be more addictive than heroin. These effects are non-anomalous, the substance likely created with profit in mind. But the substance itself appears to be derived from the spinal fluid of an unidentified species and has thus been classified as SCP-2408-2B. Do you think this is the same species? The trafficking and distribution of biological agents, including pathogens and toxins deemed anomalous by the Foundation. The creation and distribution of represents an exceptionally high-level threat, already classified as SCP. Information regarding the Red Death is presently only available on a need-to-know basis. Victims of GOI-0432 have been discovered impaled by large organic spines or completely torn apart. Cadavers display injuries suggestive of attacks by several different animals, such as bloody hoof prints. Wounds consistent with goring by a horned or tusked animal and teeth marks of a large lupine organism. The Foundation became aware of GOI-0432 in wake of the USSR's dissolution, when many anomalies and documents relating to anomalies were transferred to Foundation control by GRU Division P. The existence of GOI-0432 would be further corroborated by former members of GRU Division P. It appears that they were unable to fully contain or neutralize the threat presented by GOI-0432 and its associated anomalies, with one source describing the apparent destruction of the organization on several occasions, only for it to reappear months later, seemingly strengthened. Document, GRU Division P, Department 5, GSI, Black Lodge. And th this is pretty incredible. We've all also forgot to mention that they have the power of like turning themselves into like porcupines and shit, right? Or like have similar properties. So this is like, these are like, I mean, obviously these are really bad people. They do a lot of bad things. But holy, how interesting. They are actually superhuman capabilities. Being able to fully manipulate their bodies in an extent that is like unprecedented. Wild. I love it. Now, so far, I got around, so far, this is, this is looking really good. I, I kind of like this. GSI Black Lodge, Division P, Department 5, Department Head, VP9, GRU, DNR, 20, 3, 1959. Responsible personnel, Ivan P. Krupen. Detail. GSI Black Lodge designates a criminal organization which has augmented its illegal and deviant activity through anomalous means. GSI Black Lodge currently operates throughout the USSR, but is suspected to be headquartered in Moscow at a location referred to by the criminal class as the Old Altar. Information about this location has been primarily gathered from Wright's survivor Samuel T. and Kadinov, executed for criminal involvement once survival was deemed no longer necessary. Interview Log, Division P, Department 5, 7 3 1959. DNR 12 3 1959. Attached to document 12 3 1959. Attached is the transcript of interview of Samuel T. and Kadinov, a former Black Lodge recruit and survival of the rights. Interviewer it. Due to the loss of subject's mandible, he is only able to respond via writing. 
subject has little to no knowledge with regards to specific anomalies and appears to have suffered a great psychological trauma from his experience. Subject was recovered by workers from the sewage systems of Moscow's Arbat district. Oh, I've probably been disposed of. Where is the altar? I don't know. Below. I could not see. Blindfolded. What did you encounter within? Tell me everything you perceived. Old temple. Heathen. Black stone. Blood. Meat. The chanting. The drumming. What were you forced to do? Fight or die. No choice. For Lorak. For the glory of the hunt. I was weak. Pathetic. Worthless. How did you escape? Among the dead. Blood fed traits. Crawled away. Blood and meat and bones. Deeper. All was black. Deserved. Not strong enough. Should have been killed with honor. Agent oh. of Mobile Task Force Sci-13 was officially tasked with the infiltration of GOI-0432 on April 11th, 1994 as part of Operation Vulcanrath. Mobile Task Force Sci-13 is a highly classified Joint Foundation Global Occult Coalition Task Force created as part of Project Citra Arca. Mobile Task Force Psi-13 is designed for the infiltration of Sarkic organizations and the termination of high threat members. Like most Sarkic things, it does seem to have like a religious tendency or aspect of it. It's interesting to see that uh, it's a level of, of worthiness that, they, that is sought after, you know, strength and worthiness. But it seems like even the individual, after going through all of that, has some like uh link to it like faith wise continually saying that he was weak pathetic worthless should have died there or should have gotten a kill or should should have gotten killed that would be an honor stuff like that is a little bit like very um, uh, very religious undertones uh in regards to sarkic religions as part of Project Citra Arca, Mobile Task Force Psi-13 operatives are trained in counter-occult stratagems and the use of corrosive or incendiary armaments. Each agent equipped with a Sig Sauer P-226 modified for the use of incendiary and corrosive ammunition. Under the alias Dominic Mishkin, Agent operated in Moscow was a contract killer in order to develop a criminal reputation and ultimately gain the attention of GOI-0432. On January 20th, 1995, Agent was contacted by members of GOI-0432 and instructed to visit Red Lanterns is a popular nightclub or adult entertainment establishment located in the Golyanovo district. Employed as a Black Lodge front, it is suspected of being involved in forced prostitution, human trafficking, and the distribution of illegal, frequently anomalous, narcotics. It is believed that the local law enforcement has not intervened due to corruption and intimidation by GOI-0432. So this is a mafia Agent shit, was oh. not equipped with a recording device That's due crazy. to the delicate nature of the mission. Instead, information That's was crazy. transferred to the Foundation via dead drop. Agent entered the nightclub at 9 p.m. January 25th, 1995, equipped with a Sig Sar P226. He is observed being approached by a bouncer, which Agent proceeds to follow after a short conversation. An agent inside the nightclub reports seeing being escorted to an upstairs VIP suite overlooking the main floor. Agent does not exit the nightclub until 8 a.m. January 29th, 1995. Four. A message would later be delivered to the dead drop site at approximately 9 p.m. Four days later? Missive, January 29th, 1995. I apologize for the delay. I'll start from the beginning. I was brought upstairs and over to a circular table where six men and one elderly woman were seated. Otari, uh, Zver, Yosawa, leader of GOI-0432, sat at the far end, facing an empty chair. He told me to sit, and I obliged. Had a menacing air to him. Muscular, never removed his sunglasses. I suspect the others were higher ups, but they kept silent for the most part. He dove right in, skipped the pleasantries, said it was nice to see someone who didn't mind doing a bit of wet work. 
new blood willing to spill blood, I remember him remarking. The Osava said he was aware that I had no brothers. That was rare and dangerous to work solo in Moscow. He informed him that I received a few offers, but told those cock-sucking bitches that they weren't worth my time. Paraphrasing his response, think you're tough? You speak brave words, but maybe you're just another stupid cunt whose luck's about to run out. <laughs> he was hard to read. His tone and body language was firm, but hardly aggressive. Told him those gangs were weak. I responded, why try my luck with the lowest cards in the deck? The elderly woman leaned to Yosava and whispered in his ear. She was noticeably pale and covered with unusual tattoos. Abnormal for a Russian woman her age. Made me feel a lot more uneasy than those thugs. He said, Your blood's wrong, Karova. Words stuck out to me. They're hard to explain. Look it up. But you've got balls. I'll give you one chance to prove yourself. There's going to be a little initiation. A nice way to cull the pussies. Again, paraphrasing. He snapped his fingers and said, For now, we drink and be merry. A waitress delivered a bottle of vodka and several glasses. As per tradition, we poured our own shots. Yosava raised a glass, and I returned the favor, and we drank. And in a blink, I find myself tied up naked on a cold floor. A hood over my head, and a proper ball gag in my mouth. Not so weird. Red Lantern says a kind of BDSM theme going on. I had figured pouring my own drink would have avoided this exact sort of situation. Maybe the bottom of the glass had a layer of some kind of tranquilizer. Hard to say. Doesn't matter. It all gets a lot weirder. Dude, this is insane. This is so cool. It's like a actual lived experience. So I'm, I'm guessing that he's gonna be, you know, he's gonna show some... There's some weirdness gonna go on. There's some sarcic religious uh, kind of tradition, ritual. Maybe he gets the gift, maybe he doesn't. I mean, they talk a lot about being worthy, not being a pussy. So maybe he has to do some, th uh, you know, maybe he has to do a couple of things to really get their acknowledging, like their permission, their support. Eventually they came for me and carted me off. It was pointless to fight it. This went on for maybe an hour or two. I remember hearing the sound of old pipes and flowing water. The air was chill and damp, but there was a scent of rust and stagnant water followed by an <coughs> earthly aroma. There were voices, and not all were speaking Russian. Zidas Nin, Vartas Exdask, well, something like that. Gibberish to me, but I'm certain it was Sarkic speak. They chained me by the neck to what I would later find to be a pillar or some kind of support beam. They untied the rope from my wrists and my ankles, pulled off my hood and removed the gag. I was in a dimly lit area resembling an amphitheater, appeared fairly ancient. There were four other men in similar circumstances to my own, chained by the neck to the pillar. There was also a large crowd, possibly in the hundreds observing from higher ground. Some wore red and white robes. Others were dressed in plain clothes or business attire. I felt a prick at the base of my neck and everything after was a blur. I heard chanting. I remember skulls cracked, eyes gouged, and the feel of flesh between my teeth. Then celebration, drugs, food, women, and flashes of violence, not necessarily in that order. The memories are confused, just vague, disjointed images. I apologize for the lack of details. I awoke in my apartment, with my skin still caked in blood. Received a tattoo. Don't remember that at all, and took me by surprise. Resembles a black cyclops skull with horns and tusks. Guess they've accepted me as one of their own. <laughs> I'll be sure to step out shirtless a few times. Have the surveillance ops snap a few photographs. See if it means anything. The Foundation would henceforth receive bi-weekly mission reports from agents. Oh, dude, that was cool! I loved it! Oh, dude, that was so good! I, dude, because it's like, look, 
it was told like in 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 very information based manner, but you still kept the mystery of it. You still like things were a blur. You're not really sure what happened. Hinting at he that he was like turned into some kind of flesh monster and fought other like three other people by something that was injected in his neck and that he won of course right that seems to be like a like a big part which is just a fucking awesome which probably means that whatever they injected him with was this sort of virus or this sort of substance that turns you or makes you able to you know change your body into different things and control your muscles in a very anomalous matter oh that's so cool dude let's go i love sh dude, this shit is good shit dude. this is like perfect missive february 4th 1995 possible goi 0432 front 343465 russian federation first job was gun running more damning violence against the abraxas aunt I'll have to report me on that. In a lot of ways, the Black Lodge is like any other Bratva. They're thugs, plain and simple, and mostly driven by greed. They're also a lot nastier, which speaks volumes. You can't get much lower than Bratva. They discarded any trace of honor they had left in Serbia. The Great Mothers are certainly something you don't see in the world of organized crime. The Breivik call them hags, crones, witches, and the like. Though not for their faces. The Saki influence is clear with them. Twelve in number. They refer to each other as sisters, priestesses or some such. All wear the same outfits. A black seraphim, a stained leather apron, and a red and white shawl covering the shoulders and hair. Always barefooted. A lot of ink work, too. They aren't carcasts, but they still wield a great deal of clout over the Black Lodge. Oh, so there's like a 05 just for the Missive, backlog. March 10th, 1995. Cool. Criminal underground has a literal meaning for the Black Lodge. There's another world beneath Moscow. Abandoned Soviet bunkers. The Metro 2. Forgotten crypts. But it runs so much deeper than we knew. There's something downright ancient below. Suffice to say, I think Moscow was built atop a psychic temple. There's a dungeon. Rusted torture equipment. Pre-revolution. Maybe a relic of the time of troubles. Regardless, it looks like the Sarkites are continuing the tradition. It's not nearly as deep and ancient as that wretched temple. Might be worth researching what buildings used to exist in the general location during the 17th century. I don't know much about these places yet. Information seems to be on a need to know basis, but I think I found a weak link in their chain. One of the Great Mothers. Let's call her Five. Five shows signs of senility. She's gentle, friendly, and more importantly, naive. I've been able to glean some fairly significant intelligence from her. But I can't say much truth there is to any of it. According to her, the Black Lodge is something both new and old. Like the other Bratva, it began in the gulags of Siberia. During Suki Boini, Avgastiosava, Father of Otari appears to have been responsible for the Black Lodge's resurrection in 51, something he encountered in the Siberian wilderness after leading a successful prison break. And that's when the witches sought him out, guided him, showed him what he had forgotten. I asked what she meant by that, but her mind wandered elsewhere. She seemed happy to have someone listen to her, a chance to feel nostalgic about the old ways. She told me to take this secret and handed me several old and frayed documents. Scriptures, oh. but not the originals. Notes she must have transcribed from their primary sources. Oh, Fragmented, cool. but something I think researchers would like to see. Going to write this all down. Five also told me about Moscow's lost history. In another time, it was known by a different name. Aurochs Fall, a psychic settlement, and where the saint of war sacrificed himself for the blood of gods and tyrants. Never cared for this city. Because there was always something sinister here. As she described the ancient city, her terminology was unusually anatomical in nature, referring to different locations as the heart, lungs, and skull of Aurochs Fall. Oh, so it's like 
like it was like a huge body. Oh, interesting. Makes sense, actually. You know, that makes a lot of sense. You know, if, the, if it was the place where a certain, not a deity, but it was like the angel of war or some shit, right? Cut, ended himself, right? And then having certain departments being like, this is the lungs, this is his, this is his foot, right? <laughs> and just having like it separated up in different departments like that actually makes a lot of sense. But I will say though, it's, it reminds me, for some reason, it reminds me a little bit about Un-London. Like, you, you know Un-London, it's like essentially a, a city under a city. It seems nearly somewhat similar to this, except in this case, it seems to be a more like random settle, like random construction that leads to this like Un-Moscow, un if that makes sense. Like the structure under Moscow is kind of like a multitude of like random connections. Like you have the, like the ch old tubes, you have some bunkers, you have some crypts or whatever it's called in English. And a little bit more intertwined and a little bit more honestly old. That's what it also seems. It seems like it's very old. I know you said like 17th century, but it seems to be like older. Missive. April 18th, 1995. I'm making a special request to have my name as well as what I've done, you'll know it soon enough, removed from the final report. If I successfully complete my mission and come out of this alive, then I request immediate application of amnestics. Most of my targets have been degenerates and criminals, potential rivals and the like. But this was different. And Otari. That sick fuck wanted us to leave a different kind of message. There are other psychic cults in Moscow, non-Black Lodge. I'm talking oligarchs, government officials. One of them sent word that someone in the Ministry of Internal Affairs, a man named, wanted to crank down on the Black Lodge and was searching for allies among the few straight players left in this city. Target the family, a wife, a daughter. I don't kill them. Make an example. The sort of scars that'll never heal. Oh! Missive. April 22nd, 1995. But that is foul play. Spoke with Five again. Still trying to clear my head of what happened. She's not like the others, and I'm beginning to question just how senile she really is. When she speaks of me and her faith, there is a tone of regret. I asked her more about sarcasm. Don't worry, I didn't say the S word. And when she tells me about Ion, I feel like a child again, listening to my babushka talk about Jesus and the old prophets, whimsical, and like her, skipping over the parts that involve glorified torture and murder. I'm no researcher, historian, theologian, or whatever, but I think these cults, <coughs> this sarcasm, didn't begin this way. And I suppose that goes for most religions. Five talks about honor, friendship, virtue, and liberation. The gentle reindeer folk of Adi Um against the evil Deva. She's old, but I take it the faith changed long before her. Maybe she's begun to interpret the text differently. Maybe she's wrong, seeing good under layers of madness and atrocity. I can relate. It's always the same. Another failed revolution. Regardless, I suspect Five is an aberration. Perhaps that is the reason why she's confided in me. The others talk about the great mothers, say they can see things. And at times I wonder if she knows who I really am. And then my training tells me to eliminate her. <laughs> I think I'll ignore that training for now. Besides, no point talking at a source like her. Not yet, at least. Oh, he's gonna get caught. P.S. The arena. It isn't just for initiation. Blood sport disguised as ritual. Oh, maybe ritual disguised as blood sport. Six enter, only one comes out. A lot of the folks willing to pay to see and bet on it. Many wear the skulls of beasts and clean the suits of billionaires. Five's not a fan, it's like listening to people complain about the commercialization of Christmas. I know the Black Lodge has been classified as neo sarkic but the Great Mothers are pretty clearly proto sarkic They're traditional. 
celebrate the high holidays and still think in terms of some greater good. The rest only care about how to make themselves stronger, wealthier, etc. Otari has an animal cunning to him, but he's hardly an intellectual. Nor does he appear to be a carcass. Or at least the term hasn't been thrown around at all. So maybe there's actually more to this sarcasm that meets the eye. Like the religion around it. That it's like... That it actually has some good sides too. That it isn't all about power and strength and this bloody rituals and... Perhaps there's some underlying aspect. I mean, she's. I mean, I'm just thinking about it. Five speaks about freedom, liberty, and in a way that is rather different than most impressions I've gotten, at least from the circuit cults. Power always seemed like a like a main feature of them. So it's kind of fun to see like a different. Different. It's cool to see like a different side of the of the concept shining through. I like it. I think it's cool. I think it's pretty cool. Missive, May 1st, 1995. They've got me working in this dungeon, but they don't literally call it that. As I said before, I'm certain this place was in use well before the revolution. I wonder if the Tsars knew how many they more or less sacrificed atop an altar. Maybe they did. It wouldn't be a surprise. Sarcasm is a disease, and has more carriers than we ever imagined. They actually call it the basement's basement. <laughs> Somehow creepier than the dungeon. Torture, information gathering. Not that it's ever reliable. Examples are made. One last warning not to cross the Black Lodge. Organ harvesting too. You'd think these sarcic types would have them growing from trees. Sometimes it is just to satisfy Otari's sadism. There's one cell that's different. Asked Abovic about it. Said he didn't know and that he didn't need to know. So neither did I. A heavy door, different from the rusted bars of every other cell. Built with a small slit to peer through and another for food. Inside I saw a man, or what was left of him. His face. At, at least the eyes and nose were gone. The whole area carved out and now just a gaping hole. It reminded me of a cyclops, like the hole was gazing back at me. Kind of like that tattoo. So they may be related. He was sitting on the floor, nude and cross-legged. A muscular body covered in tattoos, scars and dried blood. Chain-linked hooks held his body in place, so he couldn't move even if he wanted to. I honestly thought he was dead at first, but I could hear his heavy breathing and see the slow expansion and reduction of his chest. Oh. I have no idea what to make of it. Scary. Smith, Book. May 6th, 1995. I got some monsters in the basement. Five let me in on a little secret. Otari has a brother by the name of Mikhail. Same father, different mother. And he's that half-dead thing in the cell. Apparently, Otari and Mikhail have somewhat of a rivalry, but that isn't why Mikhail's been imprisoned and defaced. Five was vehement about that. It seems that Mikhail volunteered for some sort of ritual. Things get pretty fucked up here. Not sure if it's drugs or not. I'll leave a vial with this report. I'm seeing things. The angles in the club and everything below are wrong. The architecture gives me a headache if I stare at it too long. Yesterday I work in a bathroom stall with a half-eaten woman. The haulers at Red Lanterns, they look human one moment and the next, well, I know monster isn't really appropriate in this line of work, but I'm not sure how else to describe them. They stare at me with feral, hungry eyes. Five once called them Rusalki. I thought she was just being figurative and now I'm not so sure. What? They slither off to the back rooms with fresh meat tailing behind. They'll be back an hour later looking satisfied, but the men that go in don't ever come out. And when I watch the pit fights, there are things in the audience that aren't entirely human. There are sounds I can't explain, like a heartbeat, sometimes roars, something deep from below, where all the blood and corpses go. <coughs> <coughs> Oof. 
Agent was declared missing in action on May 28, 1995. Gone? On June 4, 1995, after much deliberation, raids were conducted against multiple Black Lodge sites, including the Red Lantern's nightclub. During the assault, SCP-24081 were directly observed undergoing transfiguration. Despite their aggression and anomalously augmented combat prowess, the SCP-24081 threat was thoroughly neutralized through the use of incendiary armaments, with the Foundation unexpectedly suffering only minor casualties. As operations continued, it grew readily apparent that the Black Lodge had provided minimal manpower, a mere fraction of its total population in the region. Oh. The mission would result in the discovery of SCP-2408-3. SCP-2408-3 is a megalithic temple complex located within a large, deep cavern beneath the city of Moscow. Approximately 3,000 years old, it is the oldest standing structure in Russia and is the oh. type site of the Sarkic Culture Group. SCP-2408's composition comes in two forms, inorganic and organic. Its inorganic portion encompasses the exterior and is constructed from stacked megaliths of gambro, commonly known as black granite. Its organic portion fills the interior and is composed of bone, muscle, and viscera. Dude, okay, first and foremost, I bet that dude got, uh, that got, that dude was used for like a ritual or got found out by five or something. He gone. That double agent, he gone, gone. Unfortunately, I think that, because it was so cool to hear his like insight from going down there and his like, how he saw things, his perspective. It was pretty clear that there was more things going on there than just like, some individuals that, you know, could morph their body however they wanted. Here we're talking like feral female creatures that eat, seemingly eats individuals they find there. Pit fights, we're talking monsters in the cellars, weird rituals, underground like or ancient cities. 3,000 years old, that's incredible. I had a feeling it would be older than like 1700, that seemed a little bit like... What? Found among the grounds of the complex was a gladiatorial arena and a large altar. From the cavern ceiling dangled the remains of twelve elderly women, apparently disemboweled and hanged via their own intestines. Iron grates on the floor are similar to those found in meat processing plants and are likely designed to capture blood and general viscera. Oh, Access what? restricted to level 4 or authorized Citra Arca personnel. Oh, so SCP-2408-4 is a humanoid organism located directly beneath SCP-2408-3, horizontally positioned with its arms and legs outwardly extended. Entity is apparently disabled or immobile and is likely brain dead. Genetically human, albeit with many normally dormant genes being expressed, SCP-2408-4 displays many features that do not naturally occur among humans save for certain genetic and almost universally fatal deformities. These include a single eye located in the center of the face, Cyclops. flat nasal slit rather than a protruding nose, tusks, horns, and various other corneous protrusions, three rows of sharpened teeth, enlarged relative to its size, and heavily muscled jaws partial exoskeleton in coincidence with an endoskeleton, both skeletons being anomalously strong with a tensile strength comparable to carbine. SCP-2408-4's most notable anomaly is its size, with an estimated standing height of 300 meters and a weight of 70 to 72,000 tons, far larger than what should physically be possible for a terrestrial animal. Based upon the unusual length of its arms relative to the rest of its body, SCP-2408-4 likely moved with a gait not dissimilar from that of a gorilla. Further DNA analysis resulted in the discovery of certain inconsistencies, which has resulted in the hypothesis that SCP-2408-4 achieved part of its anomalous biomass through the absorption of potentially more than 100,000 human and non-human organisms. SCP-2408-4 can only be directly accessed via three distinct shafts two of which are equipped with mechanical lifts analogous to those used in mining operations. Each shaft connects to a specific region of the body, for example the skull, stomach, and the groin, and it is feared that the creation of further shafts would result in structural instability, potentially endangering a large area of Moscow. 
The passage to the stomach, which lacks a mechanical lift, appears to directly connect to the arena, ultimately providing SCP-2408-4 with sustenance. The bronze tips of over 3,000 arrows, harpoons, and spears belonging to a wide range of Eurasian cultures have been extracted from its muscle tissue. An exact cause for SCP-2408-4's current disabled state remains unknown, and some portions of the body appear to be undergoing slow decay, while other parts appear to be regenerating. Oh, so he was probably like hunted down by some ancient group of people that was kind of like, you know, that was tired of this monstrosity just destroying their were brethren's probably most likely look like hundred thousand people they probably ate some of their cousins and that that would be incredible to watch though a 300 meter tall individual scp 2408-4's body is believed to be the source of scp 2408-2a and scp 2408-2b evidence indicates that prior to its discovery by foundation operatives certain scp 2408-2 producing organs and glands were surgically removed, such as the adrenal gland, pineal gland, testes, and hypothalamus, and likely smuggled out of Moscow by members of GOI-0432. The secure containment of these anomalous organic objects is of the utmost priority. Oh, that's probably what they use At for, present, like, GOI-0432 has expanded its influence, while SCP-2408-2B addiction has reached epidemic proportions, with longtime addicts developing unusual physical traits. For example, leathery skin, black sclera, yellow irises, skeletal protrusions, and various other mutations. Unable to contain those addicted to SCP-2408-2B, Overwatch has ordered the capture and humane termination of affected individuals at designated kill sites. Remains are to be disposed of per hazardous waste protocols unless authorized for research. This order will remain in effect until SCP-2408-2B is properly contained and or eliminated. That's crazy. This concludes today's lecture. Thank you for listening, if indeed you still are, and you are all dismissed. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. There we have it. SCP-2405. Oracles Fall. Oracles? Oracles Fall. That was pretty good. I mean, look, another sar uh, Sarkic SCP, or Sarkic based SCP, but all in all, this was pretty good. I can't complain. I liked it a lot. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please leave a like. Blah, blah, blah. If you did, leave a like and subscribe. And uh, comment some comments down below if there's anything else you want me to react to. Um, and yeah, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.